Hello, Capsule Monsters! My name's Kayla, this is Cinnamon, Peaches, and Sage, and today I'm going to be looking at all of the Gen 9 Pokemon and telling you my opinions about them. In case you're interested, this video is actually part of a series on my channel where I have reviewed every single Pokemon up until this generation, so if you want to see my opinions on things like the craziness of Gen 5, you can check that out. Let's start, as we always do, with the starters. Sprigatito is obviously near and dear to my heart. I mean, I have a Sprigatito plushie literally right here. It's so cute and its personality reminds me of my actual real life cat. Middle stages of the starters are usually not so great, but Floragato's design is absolutely amazing. Like pretty much everybody, I wanted Sprigatito to stand for legs, but after we saw what it evolves into, I felt a lot less disappointed. In addition to being an awesome design, Meowskarada's animations are absolutely mind-blowing. I love the way that it literally does magic tricks, and also when it's running around, it just looks so cute. Not to mention that it's actually pretty good competitively because of its ability and stats. Boy Coco is so cute. It's my starter for my Nuzlocke, and if it ever faints, I think I will literally cry. I'm less of a fan of its middle stage crocolore. I feel like the hat motif with it also being a nest is just a little bit weird. But Skeledurge, so cool. I love that the egg has hatched and it's actually this kind of fire bird that's flying around. I love the references to it being an opera singer, and it just looks really intimidating and awesome. I don't dislike Quaxley per se, but it is my least favorite of the three starters. It kind of looks like they took Mario and turned him blue and into a duck. I have mixed feelings about Quaxwell's design. It kind of reminds me of Combuskin, which was not my favorite middle stage. When I initially saw Quaxwell, I didn't like its design, but since seeing its animations, especially the animation for the move Aqua Step, I think it's growing on me a little bit. The chonk is basically just a meme. I don't really have strong feelings about it, but I do really love that it's shiny as pink. Oink Cologne, and I think that's how you pronounce its name because it's like cologne, is a really weird design for me because you've got a pig and cologne and makeup and all of those kind of things. So. I don't understand why these two things are going together. I know that there's like some sort of saying behind it, some sort of inspiration, but it just seems a little odd. Barntula is the first spider Pokemon with eight legs, so that's pretty cool. Spideps was a Pokemon that I initially did not like, but I have one in my Nuzlocke, and it's surprising me a lot. Also, its animations are very cool. I like the concept of Nimble, and I also like how it's very, very small and sometimes difficult to see, similar to how bugs are in real life. Low Kick's design is super awesome, especially in the pictures where its legs are kind of like fanned out a little bit more, but it's another Pokemon that I haven't had the chance to use yet, so I don't have that super huge fangirlness about it the way that I have seen people online react to it. Tommy is so cute and so small, and I just love it so much. Like, from the moment that you see it at the very beginning of the game, I was just like, I need this on my team. It's so cute. I also need a plushie of it. They better come out with one of those soon, because can you imagine just like hugging a Pommy plushie? Like, yes, it needs to happen. I know people say that Pommy's evolutionary line looks too similar, but I don't care. I still really like them. I feel like Pommo gets a little bit tougher, a little bit bigger, plus they're clearly inspired by defibrillators, which I hope I said that word correctly, but anyways, they use these palm paddle things to revive people, just like Pommot uses Revival Blessing to revive Pokemon. Plus, because it's like electricity, in cartoons, usually when somebody gets shocked by their paddles, their hair like sticks up all crazy. Now I'm gonna have crazy hair for the rest of the video. Fun. But their hair sticks up all crazy, just like Pommy's hair gets more and more and more crazy as it evolves into Pomma. Tandy Mouse is cute. I was very confused when I initially saw this Pokemon because it seemed like it was two Pokemon 
but it's actually just one. Mousehold is also super adorable, especially with its evolution mechanic happening off screen. Like most Pokemon, you see them evolve, and Mousehold is just like, hey, surprise, there's more of us now. Also, its move population bomb is really interesting, and I can't wait to try it out. Fido is extremely cute, but with all of the dog Pokemon in this generation, I feel like it kind of missed out. I just feel like it's getting lost in the shuffle. Dash Bun is really cute though, and its ability is super creative. So there's that. I still think Smoliv is absolutely adorable. Salive is also super cute. I love its little tiny face. And I also really like Arboliva, Arboliva, that Pokemon. I really like its design. I think it's very cool that instead of going with the plant flower route, they went with a tree for the third stage of a grass Pokemon. I do not like Squawkabilly. I don't know what it is about it, but I just find it kind of annoying. I appreciate the pun of the name Nackley, and plus I found a shiny one of this. So I like this Pokemon. I feel like Knackle Stack is almost like a reference to Minecraft. I'm also really excited to try out Garganackle on a team, especially because of its ability. Sharkadet, design-wise, has the perfect mixture of cute and cool. Originally, I liked Cerulege better than Armor Rouge, but Armor Rouge has been growing on me more and more, especially because it seems to be the more competitively viable of the two. Like Cerulege looks super awesome, but it did not pull its weight on my playthrough team. Before I caught Tad bulb, I was super excited about it because it looks like a little light bulb with a little light switch as a tail, and I just love the combination of those inspirations. But having it on my Nuzlocke team has made me appreciate it even more. I also have a huge appreciation for Belly Ball. I feel like from when they revealed it as Iono's partner till now with it being on my Nuzlocke team, my love for this Pokemon has just grown and grown, and I just, I just, it's kind of adorable. Watch was an interesting one for me because in my first playthrough of Pokemon Violet, I was able to catch it on the beach at a very high level really early, and then I went through this whole debate about whether or not I should have it on my team. I think maybe one of the reasons that I decided not to use it on my playthrough team is that it reminds me a lot of other bird Pokemon from previous generations. Like, Kilowattro is super cool, but so were other bird Pokemon that look pretty similar to it. Mastiff started out as probably my least favorite puppy Pokemon introduced in this generation, but after the storyline with Arvin, it quickly became my favorite puppy Pokemon. I feel similarly about Mabostiff. Anybody who has had an animal that's gotten older like that just will feel all the feels. Shirtle is probably one of my least favorite Pokemon in this generation. I just feel like it's entirely unnecessary. Grafi Eye, on the other hand, is one of the coolest Pokemon introduced in this generation, and I'm very excited to play around with it. Bramblin is an interesting concept, especially for the overworld, and I also like the lore behind it. Bramblegast, I like a little bit less, and its lore is just straight up terrifying. Was Toad School necessary? Debatable. Is it hilarious? Yes. I feel the same way about Toad Squirrel as I do Toad Squirrel. Off has one of the most terrifying cries in all of the Pokemon universe. Like you see this crab, it's kind of got kind of like goofy eyes, and then it's just like, and you're like, okay, never mind. All right, I'm scared now. Capsicum is a Pokemon I'm not a huge fan of. This might partly be because I can't eat spicy food at all. And I appreciate the concept of Scovillain even more, but again, Spicy food. No. Relor is one of the most disgusting Pokemon I have ever seen. And I refuse to elaborate on that further because I feel like the picture speaks for itself. Rapska, in contrast, is very interesting and I wish that it just didn't have a pre-evolution. Little is both cute and creepy and I think it was supposed to be. Espartha is definitely an interesting Pokemon. I know some people aren't the biggest fans of its design, but I actually really like it. I think it strikes that perfect balance of like, ooh, what is this? And also, I'm kind of terrified. In terms of gameplay, I love Tinkatink, but in terms of design, I'm not a huge fan of Pokemon that look a little bit too much like human babies. Tinkatuff, on the other hand, love it. The ponytail, the hammer, the attitude, just 
everything. And then Tinkaton is like, what if that, but more. I feel like this Pokemon kind of embodies me a little bit because I like to be all bubbly and happy, but I also like to kick some butt. Wiglet is another one of those Pokemon that's interesting in terms of its interactions in the overworld, but I'm not the biggest fan. Wugtrio is weird because it looks kind of cute being pink and all, but it's actually really scary. Like, read the information about it. This is a scary Pokemon. Bombardier is majestic and cool, but it also haunts my nightmares because it killed Lila. If you don't understand that reference, you should probably watch my nose Finizen is the first dolphin Pokemon and it looks kind of like a Lisa Frank drawing and I love it. Caliphant gives new meaning to the move flip turn. Some people were kind of meh about it, but I really like its Clark Kent Superman kind of vibe. Varum was kind of a disappointing Pokemon to me because I thought it would stay on the ground, but for some reason they have it levitate in the air. I feel the same way about Reverum. There's no reason that car Pokemon should be just like floating around. I feel like Cyclozar is pulling a surprising amount of work for just a regular one stage Pokemon considering how it works in the story, the fact that it's used for transportation in the region, and how its ability works making it potentially useful for competitive. Orthworm is one of those Pokemon that's cute scary and I love that. Glimmet is one of the most interesting and mysterious Pokemon of this generation and I really hope that the DLC will shed some light on it. Same thing with Glamora, especially with it being the champion's Pokemon. I'm super curious what's going on there. Not to mention Glamora has a really fun ability so I had it on my playthrough team. Forget what I said about Mastiff, Grievard might be the cutest puppy in this generation. I love finding the little candles and having it pop out of the ground and also the one that's dancing when you fight rhyme is just so cute. I feel like Houndstone's design is so so close to being exactly what I want it to be, but there's just something that's a little bit off and I don't know what it is, but if you know, let me know in the comments. Flamigo was a Pokemon that really surprised me in this generation. I ended up catching one really randomly in my playthrough and it stayed in my team for a surprisingly long time. It wasn't that bad for a one stage mod. So Tottle is an example of how you do baby Pokemon right. You have this one that's like a giant baby that's all like, ah, it's cute and not grumpy. For some reason, I can't get over the shape of its mouth. It just seems like it'd be really impractical. My initial opinion on Belusa was, wow, this is super cool. And then a whole bunch of them ran into me when I was trying to surf around the lake and now I kind of don't like it as much. Dundozo as a Pokemon is a really interesting concept and I like that they made it one of the Titan Pokemon, but I felt like the interaction with that Titan was very confusing because it wasn't clear. It was like, was it eaten? Was it like being controlled by it? I wish that there was more clarity around that when you play because I feel like a lot of the Pokemon community is still really confused. Tatsugiri is cute and interesting though shiny hunting for this scares me because there are so many different forms. Annihilate is the perfect way to take a Pokemon from an earlier generation and give it an evolved form. It fits so well with Primeape's dex entry and its design is incredible. Haldane, Wooper, and Clodsire are so cute. Yo. I had a Quagsire on my team back in Gen 2, so I knew when I saw Clodsire that it had to be on my team. Its ability and typing made it really interesting too. I really like Ferrigarath's design, and I was originally planning on having it on my team, but I'm not sure so much about its competitive usefulness, especially within the game because it's like all singles. It definitely has more potential in double battles though. The Dunsparce. It wasn't what I expected, but is it what I deserve? There are some aspects of King Gambit that I think are really interesting, especially the idea of it kind of bowing down and the sword going down. Its mechanics are also super cool, but it's sitting on this rock thing. So like, does it bring the rock with it? How exactly does that work? Is that part of the Pokemon? I don't know. Whenever Pokemon have that sort of like object with the Pokemon situation, I just get really confused. It's paradox time, starting with the past form. Great Tusk looked really cool in its initial trailer, but became underwhelming when you actually saw it in game. I mentioned earlier that I like the combination of cute and menacing, and Screamtail is exactly that. Design-wise, Brute Bonnet is a little strange, and also Amoongus might even be better competitively, 
so I'm a little confused why this Pokemon exists. Fluttermane in terms of design and also the way it plays is my favorite of the Paradox Pokemon. I like Slitherwing, but based on the internet's reaction to it, I feel like it's a little overhyped. I was a little weirded out by Sandy Shocks until I saw the way it walks, and now I think it's actually really funny. Okay, now on to the future form. Unlike the other Don fan form, I feel like Iron Treads was kind of underwhelming in the trailer, but in the game is actually a lot better, especially because its face when it's happy does this adorable little emoji. Iron Bundle is such an interesting interesting concept, like a future deli bird? I never thought we would get anything for deli bird like that. And the way its head pops off is super creepy. Iron Hands is a cool design, but when you see it in the overworld, it's surprisingly small. I feel like it should be a bigger Pokemon. Same thing with Iron Jugulus. It looks like it should be this awesome giant dragon, but it's actually just really tiny. Iron Moth is another Pokemon that I like, but I feel is kind of overhyped. Iron Thorns I appreciate though, because it feels like it's kind of a reference to Mecha Godzilla. I don't like Frigibax. I'm sorry. I know there's probably people out there that are fans of its design and think it's really cool, but I don't like it. I like Arctobax's design a little bit more, but for a pseudo-legendary, it's definitely not my favorite. The concept of Baxcalibur is interesting, and I kind of like where they're going with it, but I think it would be a much cooler Pokemon if it walked on four legs. Anybody else have dreams where you're just playing Scarlet and Violet and you hear the sound of a gimme ghoul that you just can't find? This might be kind of a hot take, but Gold Golden Go is one of my favorite Pokemon in this generation. It is super fun to play with competitively, its animations are amazing, and I love its just kind of chill like, hey, I'm fighting over here kind of attitude. I understand it's not what people expected it to be, but that doesn't make it bad. Well, Xian is pretty cool and its animations are amazing. Xian Pao is my favorite of the Ruinous Quartet because of course it's a cat. Ting Lu on the other hand is my least favorite of the Ruinous Quartet. I just don't get how you get that from a bowl. Chi Yu is my second favorite of the Ruinous Quartet because I really like how it is a very small legendary Pokemon. Roaring Moon is extremely extremely fun to play competitively, and it has a very intimidating design. Iron Valiant is also very scary, and I like how it takes inspirations from both Gardevoir and Gallade. Originally, I liked Maridon more than Coridon, but after seeing Coridon's animation, I was much more torn on these two Pokemon. At this point, I think I might like Coridon more than Maridon, actually. That being said, Maridon's emoji eyes are very cute. And those are all my opinions on the Gen 9 Pokemon. Well, that is, until they release DLC and probably add a whole bunch more new Pokemon. What are your opinions on these Pokemon? Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to talk about all things Pokemon, especially Pokemon theories, you should join my Discord, Capsule Monsters, which will be linked below. I hope you have a great day or night, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!